go. <laughs> Mr. President, we are honored by your presence in Arkansas today. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my high honor and distinct personal privilege to present the President of the United States. Thank you, John Paul Vance. And you know, as president, a lot of important papers cross my desk. And one of them told me about some teams that are undefeated after seven games. Nationally ranked, moving up, and that have some of the greatest football fans in the United States. led that task force. You know who led the offensive against drug smuggling at our borders? That just in the past year alone seized a record 70 eyes to strengthen NATO to counter Soviet intermediate range nuclear missiles. Who did I turn to to do the job? George Bush. Now today, I don't think I need to review your whole life who is more liberal. But we have to give equal time, so here's the response. That it's wrong to use labels because ideology doesn't matter. His or her grandmother, the grandmother will have to be licensed by the federal government. 
One of the congressional staff members behind that bill was asked by a reporter if this was true, that grandmothers would have to get a federal license to take care of their own grandchildren. And the reply came, yes, of course it's true. After all, and here's the quote, how else could you design a program that receives federal funds? <laughs> license. But there's more. In this election, one of the candidates believes that no matter how horrible or brutal the crime, he opposes capital punishment. If you ask me, there are no Americans braver and no citizens more precious than the men and women who guard us, our state and local police. And George Bush and I stand behind them all. Are these same liberals say that the only people in the United States who should be permitted to have guns are the military and police officers. Is that what you believe? I didn't think so. <laughs> so on November 8th, be sure to go to the polls and vote for George Bush and Dan Quayle. We and our NATO allies stood firm in the face of Soviet missiles pointing at the heart of Europe and Asia. And Mr. Some of you out there can't read what this says. It says, I'm a bush hog. Hey, pig suing me. Mr. President, there is a special Arkansas song we would like to share with you this morning. A song commissioned for our Susquehanna Lindsay. It's the spirit of the Capitol Dome. It's the spirit of the rivers and the spirit of the lakes. Oh, Arkansas. Oh, Arkansas. Arkansas, USA. It's the spirit of Frank. It's the spirit of pride that we all be saved every day. Oh, Arkansas. Oh, Arkansas. Arkansas, USA. Oh, Arkansas. Oh, Arkansas. Arkansas, USA.
responsibility of introducing to you an individual who has changed the character of the most important values we have in America and we all know that the transmission of values is the single most important objective of a society. Ronald Reagan has helped us to understand that we can offer to those who follow us a brighter tomorrow than the day which we have. set America on the path of what is now the longest peacetime expansion on record, and as we negotiated the first real reduction in U.S. You know, I, was, I couldn't help thinking the problem with those fellows on the other side is not camera angles or lighting, it's not whether their candidate is likable or not. No, it's the very thing they spent this campaign trying desperately to hide. Regulations have driven our economy to its knees with a one, two, three combination of inflation, economic stagnation, and unemployment. Well, we turned that around. Since our expansion began, we've created over 18 million new jobs. That is more new jobs than Europe and Japan combined. And they've expansion ever recorded. We're exporting more than ever before in our history. And a greater proportion of Americans and a greater number of Americans are at work today than ever before in the history of... In other words, the total population of the United States except those below age 16. Well, today, 62.7% of that total population have jobs. Yeah! Between 1977 and 1981, I don't know why I picked those years, <laughs> the real income of the typical American family dropped 7%.
talk about reaching to the center. But from the economy to national defense, they've taken positions only in the government could love. And a new warmth in relations, not through weakness, but through our policy of peace, through strength. You'd, you'd think our liberal friends would have learned from them. But not long ago, listen, our strategic defense against ballistic missiles, and if they had their way, what they proposed already, we would have to get rid of two carrier battle groups in the Navy. You know, in fact, what they plan for the Navy is so bad that by the time they get through, Michael may have to roll the boat ashore. <laughs> run by those whose only pledge of allegiance is to more government and more spending and who have never let the taxpayers' dollars out on furlough. Do you want our foreign policy in the hands of those who criticized our rescue mission in Grenada and our strike on Libya and who always, always blame America first? is, do you want the liberals in control in Washington? We've accomplished much these last eight years, but we could have accomplished even more, including, I believe, balancing the budget if both houses of Congress had been friendly. Ours is a system of... We don't want a president who would raise taxes. Why elect a Congress that would? We don't want a big spending president. Why should we want a big spending Congress? Especially its liberal leadership in Congress. An old label on a new and very different package. But you know something? The party of Harry Truman couldn't be killed. Harry Truman's party believed in working Americans and in keeping America's defenses strong. And yes, in one nation under God.